All right, let's start this thing back up again. We had a little technical difficulties, but we're back. Another edition of Knicks Offseason Central. CP from Knicks Fan TV here. This is the home of the diehard Knicks fan. So if you are a diehard Knicks fan who loves to talk about Knicks news and rumors after every game, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. I'm on location right now at the mercy of the hotel Wi-Fi. If the audio is not good, if the video is not good, please let me know in the chat so I can make sure to try to fix everything. All right. Uh, you know what? I want to come on real quick. There's no phones today. I want to come on real quick just to let you guys know there have been huge, huge, huge NBA draft updates as it pertains to the Knicks. We are less than two days away from the NBA draft and there's a lot going on. Now, there's always a lot going on when it gets closer to the draft. There's always a lot of smoke. There's some real news. There's some rumors. It's hard to really tell what is what. I go back to two years ago when we drafted Frank. There were those rumors that the Knicks, that Phil Jackson wanted to trade KP to the Phoenix Suns. We now know that those were real uh, trade negotiations going on, but it never went through. They never did trade KP. First thing we're hearing is that Darius Garland is coming in tomorrow to the Knicks training facility for an emergency last minute workout. Now, this is according to Draft Express. There is serious, serious interest by the Knicks in Darius Garland, and he's coming in for a last minute workout. Now, my opinion is it, 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 listen, you have to do your homework. All right, you can't just, just because the Knicks like RJ and they're leaning towards RJ, you have to do your homework. We're hearing that the Pelicans might want to trade up to two to steal RJ from the Knicks, right? So you have to be prepared. So they have to work out everybody. You know, we know they met with John Moran. We know they met with RJ. They met with Cam Reddish, okay, along with a, 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 a host of other guys. So... The Garland workout is interesting because they're saying that it is serious. Draft Express tends to be fairly credible when it comes to those type of news. It'll be interesting to see. Now, Darius Garland, some people regarded him as the best point guard in the draft if he didn't get injured. Ja kind of stole that spotlight from him once Darius Garland went down after 10 games with Vanderbilt, went down with the torn meniscus. A lot of people compared Darius Garland's game to Dame Lillard. Real quick twitch, hesitation dribble, unlimited range, um, speed, the quickness, the agility. That boy can ball. You know, we've only seen a limited sample size from him, but that boy can ball. So his stock is certainly rising, and the Knicks want to get a last look at him, and I don't blame him. You want to make sure that when you're going into that war room on Thursday, you're going in there picking the right guy, and you want to make sure that you're very confident in your selection. You know, it doesn't mean you're going to be right. doesn't mean you're going to be wrong. But you have to go into it with the confidence that your guy's your guy. So I know a lot of you in the chat are saying RJ's our guy. A lot of you have been hitting me up on Twitter, on, on Instagram, at KnicksFanTV, saying, yo, CP, what's going on? You know, we really want RJ. I, I do think they're still going to lean towards RJ Barrett. But as you know, as guys have stated, Mark Berman told us on the podcast, you have to do your homework. You never know. Some of these guys could come up in trade discussions in the future. Maybe not during the draft. Maybe years down the road. You know, you may be interested in a guy. So you want to bring him in for a workout. You want to bring him in for a workout and, and get to know him, get to know his game. So we'll see. That's a tidbit on Darius Garland. Next up, the Knicks were propositioned by the Hawks to trade the 8th pick and the 10th pick for the number 3 pick. They turned it down. According to ESPN, according to Draft Express, the Knicks were propositioned by the Hawks for the 8th and the 10th pick, and they said, no, thank you. A lot of you guys had asked about that earlier. Uh, a lot of you guys had called in, asked about the possibility of trading down with an eye on the Hawks' eight picks at 8 and 10 to see if we can get some more depth there. Now, clearly the Knicks don't want to do it. And they're going to stick with three. So now what they're saying is they're saying the Pelicans may be interested in trading out from four for eight and ten. Maybe get some more depth there. Now, me personally, if I'm the Pelicans, 
I would probably go try to trade for Garland. I mean, to try to draft Garland and trade Lonzo. I think Garland and, and Zion could be box office. You know, I think Zion and Garland could be box office. But uh, the Knicks turn that down. And, and they're clearly looking to trade. Not Sorry, not to trade, but to draft R.J. Barrett at number three. And I think that's the right move. I think that's the right move. I like this kid's game. I like his attitude. You know, you're hearing all the right things from this kid. He's confident in, in his ability to be a leader. He thinks he can really lead the Knicks. He thinks he can really be the guy on the Knicks. He's willing to work hard. He mentioned his background, his upbringing, his family. You know, he, he, has, a, he has a good, solid core values. And I think he's really going to put in that work to be the best player he can be for the New York Knicks, man. And that's what we want. We want the guys that want to be here and that's going to put in the work. You don't have to question his motor or anything like that. So that's R.J. Barrett. We turn down the Hawks trade. Now, they're saying that the Pelicans are either entertaining the Hawks trade, but they could also be trying to trade up to two to potentially get R.J. Barrett. Now, what does that mean for us? It means John Morant could be there at three. You just never know. And this is why I said you have to evaluate everybody within your range because you just never know on draft day what's going to happen. Never know on draft day what's going to happen. So, you know, what do you guys think about that, man? What, what do you guys think about that? Shout out to everybody watching, man. Hit that thumbs up for your boy. Out here live on location. Tomorrow night will be the draft show. Be back at the studio. Me, Jay Ellis, Schwinney from Posting and Toasting. We're going to go through the draft. We're going to break down RJ Barrett a little bit. We'll talk a little bit about Jared Culver. I know Swinney kind of likes Culver over Barrett, so we'll get into that debate a little bit. But we're also going to talk about some second-round sleepers, some guys to look out for. We got the 55th pick in the second round. So we'll, 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 go, we'll go through some of those guys that Swinney thinks could be on the board in the second round at, at, at 55. So, uh, so, so we'll see what happens in that regard. Uh, shout out to Will from LI. What's good, Will? Kawhi Leonard in the building. Kawhi Leonard is in the chat live from the championship parade. Shout out to Kawhi Leonard, man. I hope you guys, I hope you sign with the Knicks. Guillermo, what's going on? Macho Man Logic 345 was in here early. Shout out to Macho Man Logic. Knicks Fan TV, Dave, appreciate you. Random Mike Powell. Eric F says Shamori Pons with the 55th pick. Not a bad look. Wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad look. I would definitely take Shamori Pons on the team. Black Caesar, what's going on? I am Rex the King, what's going on? <laughs> Y'all say no hat. Yo, I left my hat at home. I got the wave spinning, though. For those of you that want to take some classes, I got the wave spinning, though. But back to basketball. Uh, so those are the tidbits on the draft. RJ, still the guy. I think RJ is definitely still the guy. But watch out for the Pelicans. Watch out for the Pelicans and watch out for Darius Garland. Hey, just a name. Just a name. I still think it's smoke. I still think they're working him out just to do their homework. Maybe to boost his stock up a little bit. Sometimes these guys do this as a favor to the agents. We heard Berman say that on the podcast. We didn't hear the Berman podcast. It's a very good one. Uh, click on that eye icon at your top right. Whenever you guys come in, do two things. Hit that thumbs up button and click that eye icon at the top right hand side of your screen. I'll put some of, of my most recent videos that you may have missed. Some of the most important videos that's kind of related to the discussion. So what I put in tonight was um, back when we had the discussion on John Morant versus Darius Garland. We had Spencer Perlman, who's an NBA scout break down both of them who he liked he went to Vanderbilt with Darius Garland so he was a bit more complimentary of Darius Garland but he has some good things to say about John Moran as well and that video is doing very well on YouTube right now so check that out in top hand right check that out that conversation that we had a few months back all right so that's the draft uh also in the draft to look out for will Frank Nilakina be traded that's been the million dollar question for quite some time now. Is Frank going to get traded? The question is, we don't know. The question is, we don't know. Uh, we spoke to Mark Berman. You guys heard that podcast. We spoke to Ian Begley. You guys hit, heard that podcast. Hit that thumbs up for Ian Begley. And they basically both said the same thing. It's like, listen, no play is untouchable. Yes, they have been exploring trades for Frank. And 
If they get the deal they're looking for, they're going to trade them. They're going to trade them. Me personally, I don't think they're going to get the deal they're looking for. They're definitely not going to get a first round pick. I highly doubt it. And maybe they get a second, maybe. But I think Frank is here next year. We'll see what happens. What do you guys think in the chat? Do you think there's a chance they will get Frank traded or not? You know, a lot of things are, are working against them. Number one is durability. Hasn't been healthy. Only played half a season last year. And and the performance. It just hasn't been where he wanted it to be, especially in his sophomore year. So we'll see what happens with, with, with Frank in that regard. Um, for those of you in the NYC area, we're going to have the draft party at Slattery's, the same place where we had the lottery party. So anybody in the NYC area, come through. We'll be there with everybody. JLs will be there. Nick's Film School, Posting and Toasting, all my guys will be there. Uh, myself and JLs will be at Barclays in the draft. We're going to live stream from the draft, pre show. RJ Pick will stay for a little bit, get your reactions, get some reactions. And then, uh, and then we'll head over to the draft party and live stream a little bit from there. Service gets a little iffy at the draft party, so I want to stream first from the draft, and then, uh, and then we'll we'll figure it out, man. We'll, we'll figure it out from there. Okay, so that's the draft. Free agency. Now, Berman also mentioned in his article that the Knicks are interested potentially. In Julius Randle. Now I've been having some uh, some discussions, some debates with you guys on Twitter, Instagram, at Knicks Fan TV. A lot of discussion going on about Julius Randle. Had a breakout year this year, twenty one and seven. Uh, had a very good year for the Pelicans this year, especially with Anthony Davis on the sideline. Julius Randle definitely shined, definitely beasted on us in that game in New Orleans. Um, he's a good player. He's a good player. Power forward. We have a huge hole at the four. You know, Vonley did his thing for a little bit last year. I know a lot of us liked him, but I think we're kind of prisoners in the moment. As CP the artist would always say, we're kind of prisoners of the moment with Vonley. Uh, I don't necessarily think they should bring him back. He kind of tapered off in the second half. Julius Randle could be an option at the four. We definitely need a power forward. He increased his three-point percentage this year, 34%. Yeah, he's not killing you with floor spacing. 34% is not the greatest. If you think about him and Mitch together, yeah, that's a little slide. That's a little deficiency there, for sure. There's pros and cons to picking up Randall. It's a little deficiency there. So, But, he, but he's capable. I, I think he showed last year that he's a three-point capable shooter, maybe just not where you kind of want him to be. Maybe you want it to be closer to 40, a little bit over 40 to kind of be that solid, you know, mix. But you can't you can't have everything. You can't have everything. So it'll be interesting to see what his market value is. You you know Dallas will probably be interested. He's a hometown kid from Dallas. Maybe then maybe the Lakers. Who knows? You know, it'll be interesting to see how much money he's gonna command on the open market. But I think I wouldn't want to lock him into like a three, four year deal. Definitely not. But if we can get him for like a two year deal, maybe like one year with a player option on Julius Randle, I would, I would, pro I would probably entertain it. I would entertain it, man. Uh, let's see what you guys think about uh, Julius Randle. Kaiser Sose seven one eight. What up, Kaiser? He says uh, Randle and Vonley, same player. I don't see the upgrade. I, I, I think, I think he's a, he's much better offensive player than. Than Vonley, to be honest with you. I think he's a much better offensive player. Defensively, maybe not. You know what's so funny is that defensively, his defensive play rating was around the same as Ennis Cannon. And we saw how that turned out. A lot of us couldn't wait to get Cannon out of here, but we want to bring Julius Randle in here. It was kind of kind of funny how that how that works, man. Kind of funny how that works. Jimmy I says uh Randall's a good fit. I am Rex the King. Randall is a baby Zebo. Uh, hey, I love Zebo, man. Zebo was my guy. That would definitely be a good look if we if we got Zebo Jr. in here. Zebo got a little bit of drama going on himself off the court drama. Well, we don't get there. But shout out to Zebo, man. 
But, you know, Julius ran out a good year, man. 21 and 8. I said 21 and 7. 21 and 8. Um, three dot fifty two percent from the from the field. That's excellent. Thirty four from three. Capable. You know. You will see. Interesting name, man. Interesting name. We gotta keep keep his price within range. If we could get him within range, I, I don't. That, that might not be a bad idea. Uh, Justin Ariola says Jermichael Green. I like Jermichael Green. Jermichael Green could be a good cheaper option at the four. You know, is he a starter? You know, we'll see. He's, he's kind of like a Vonley type, you know, kind of like in, uh, in between. Can he handle a uh, 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 full-time full -time load? James Moore says, I'll take Vonley 10 and 8 on the cheap. Okay. Okay. Brian Bazin says, two years, $28 million for Randall. So it's about 14 a year. Uh, yeah, I like something like that. I like something like that. You know, 14, maybe, you know, 17, 18 on the high side. And, and you know, I would do that. TB in the chat says, y'all know Randall defense was worse than Canada. That's what I was saying. That's the irony of the whole thing is that we couldn't wait to get one guy out of here who's around the same age and put up the same numbers damn near. Uh, and, and we want to bring in Randall. So, you know, that that's just how it is. We need a four. We need scoring. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the guy we had in Canada, he's gone. The guy we had in Canada, he's gone. Somebody in the chat said uh, Marcus Morris is an option. I would like him if we were going the more competitive win-now route. But if we're going young still, I think I would lean towards Randall. If we could get him on the cheap. If you could get him on the cheap. Jermichael Green I like as well. Jermichael Green I like as well. You know, no long-term contracts. Um, somebody said trade for Aaron Gordon. I, I can't see the Magic doing that, but might not be a bad idea. I think Aaron Gordon is, uh, he, he's just tipping the iceberg, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat. We got 350 people in here. Hit that thumbs up button for the boy. Yo, the last video hit 500 likes. 11,000 views, 500 likes in two days. Definitely appreciate the support. Hit that thumbs up button for your boy. Uh, where are you guys checking in from, man? Throw your city in the chat. If you're watching live right now, put your city in the chat. Where are you watching from? And if you're watching this later on, leave a comment on the video where you're checking in from so we can shout you out. If you guys are new, hit that hashtag new so we could also shout you out, man. And like I said, a couple things going on. Uh, we got the draft party going on. We have the draft pre-show tomorrow night. Uh, around 9, 9.30 Eastern, I'm back in the studio, taking your phone calls. JL will be there. Schwinny from Posting and Toasting. We're going we're gonna to talk. Yeah, we're going to talk about RJ. We're going to talk about a lot about second round options. You know, we haven't really talked about that. Hasn't really been talked about. We'll talk about some second round options, some people who could be there in, in the second round. So make sure you guys stick around and, and, and please call in. We got the draft party going on Thursday for those of you in the NYC area. For those of you not in the area, we'll be at the draft. We'll be live streaming from the draft pregame and during the draft and after the third pick is announced. So definitely stay tuned for that. Summer League. I will be in Vegas for Summer League. Linking up with my guy CK2K. We're going to be at the Thomas and Mack Center for Nick's Summer League. Probably doing a little bit of play-by-play. -play. I got to see what the vibe is like when I get in there. See what I can do with the live streaming and whatnot. But I will definitely be at Summer League reporting live during free agency. So definitely stay tuned. Also, Moke Hamilton is coming back. You know, the Moke show, we had to reschedule it. Moke couldn't make it. The last time he got a little sick, but Moke Hamilton is going to join us for the pre for the free agency show on June 30th at 6 p.m. We're going live right as free agency kicks off, giving you the live updates and seeing what happens. You never know, man. It could be a lot of interesting tidbits going on uh, as soon as the as soon as the free agency period starts. So you definitely want to stay tuned on the channel for that one. And, uh, yeah, man, I got, I got a lot of big things going on for the channel, man. So definitely subscribe if you haven't subscribed and hit that thumbs up button. Let's shout out some people who are checking in. 
Far too smart. Just where you at? I'm out here in D.C., Washington, D.C., man. Out here on a business trip. So uh, no studio tonight, no hat. I left my hat, man. I jumped on like a 6 a.m. flight after that Father's Day. You know, was in a, was in flustered all over the place. I left my house at like 4.30, caught a 4.30 a.m. flight. To catch, I mean, 4.30 a.m. Uber to catch a 6 a.m. flight. You know, so a little, little out of sorts. I left my stuff, man. Gary Singh says 20 subs by end of summer. I hope so, Gary. Between me and you, I hope so. If if we if I get to 20 subs, hey, that would be that would be a blessing, man. But what I need from you guys to do is share these videos. Very important to share these videos. We need more people. The way we get more people is you guys sharing these videos. There's a share button on the bottom of the video. Just click share. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Twitter. You don't even have to put a caption. Just share it. Somebody's gonna see it. That's a Knicks fan, and they'll be here for the next one. It goes a long way. Trust me. I right, let's shout out to people. Jose L. from Yonkers. What up, Jose? Philip Ross. The mean streets of New Hyde Park. Shout out to Philip Ross. Long Island in the building. Sebastian Palmer. What's good, Bredgen? Rep in Brooklyn. That's my guy. James Moore says, what happened to Isaiah Hicks? Nothing. <laughs> let's, let's forget about him. He's trash. Uh, Giovanni Warner, Barbados, shout out to the islands, man. We, we global out here. Let's go. Uh, Melbourne, Austra uh, Melbourne, Florida. Steve Steve Stark, the realtor, what's going on? I'm here in Florida. It's a, a hotbed. A lot of people fleeing New York and New Jersey to go to Florida. So it must be good business for Steve. Shout out to Steve. Easy win says me without the hat throwing me off. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm all out of sorts, man. It was, it was all good. It is all good, man. Uh, Matthew Kelsell, he's new. Welcome to the channel, Matthew. Welcome to the to the nation, man. Welcome to the family, bro. Um, James Isaacs from from the A ATL. What's going on, James? Camario, Antigua and Barbuda. Always checking in. Appreciate it. Cisco Alejandro is new. Representing. Shout out to Cisco. That's what's up, man. That that's what's up. Doctor Carpy from from Canada. Shout out to Canada. And uh, yeah, man, shout out to everybody in here. There's a lot of people, a lot of New Yorkers, some Jersey. I see some Newark in here. Okay. Car Guru, yeah, Car Guru checking in from, I believe, Latvia, I believe. O'Neill Cabral from Belize. Shout out to Belize. That's one place I want to get to. Um, that's one place I definitely want to get to. Shout out Belize. Uh, Jay Ellis, I don't think he's going to Summer League. I'll definitely be out there. Uh, CK2K is going to be out there. I'm going to link up with CK. And we're going to be doing some uh, some vlogging, doing some live streams as, as well. Gladiator PR, always in here from Puerto Rico. We got a lot of people from Puerto Rico checking in, man. I got Tony from Puerto Rico in here. Salvador, the Gladiator. Puerto Rico is always repping in here heavy, man. I love that. And it's Turan. He's a Turk from Germany. 5 a.m. in Germany. Shout out to you. Shout out to you, man. You, you, you're the most dedicated guy watching right now. 5 a.m. in Germany, man. That's that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So once again, shout out to everybody in here. Definitely, definitely appreciate you guys showing love, subscribing, uh, commenting on the videos. Yo, there's so many comments in the last couple of videos that I did. I'm having a hard time keeping up with everything, but I see, I read all the comments. I see all the comments. Please keep the comments going. I will get back to them at some point. Just got a lot going on. I'm trying to get to all the comments. Christian Vasquez, DR in the building. Shout out to Christian. A lot going on in DR right now, but I hope I hope things get better. Hope things get better in the DR right now, man. Uh, so what else? So we got free agency starting June 30th. How about Al Horford? What do you guys think about Al Horford? You know, Al Horford uh, declined his, his player option with the Celtics. And they're saying that he's going to be looking for a long-term deal elsewhere. What, what do you guys think about Al Horford, man? Al was making a, quite a bit of bread. He was making quite a bit of bread with the Celtics. I'm on basketball reference right now. Let's uh, let's check out Al Horford. What do you guys think about Al Horford? Ozai Green says, hell no. And somebody else says, hell yes. <laughs> I mean, what did he do this year? 13 and 6. 53% from the field, 36% from three, 58% effective field goal percentage. You know, now I, I think what I like about Al Horford is, number one, he fills a need at the four. Number two, he's a veteran leader. 
that could be a good locker room guy. Problem is, I think he's going to be asking for too much money. He made $30 million. No, he made 28 last year. He stood to make 30 this year, this season upcoming. So it's kind of interesting that he opted out. I'm not sure what he's looking for. Because, I mean, I can't see him. He's definitely not getting that much money elsewhere. Well, maybe he's looking for more long-term stability. I'm not sure. No, no, no. I'm not talking about Al Horford for a max contract. Hell no, hell no, hell no. Please forget it. I'm talking about a player like that if the market collapses on him and if you could get him on the cheap and he's willing to come in and be a mentor, then yeah, I would definitely take him. Josiah Green says he's going to play with LeBron. I would like that. I could see Al Horford on the Lakers. I, I could see Al Horford on the Lakers. That would be a good look. He deserves a ring. I like Al Horford. I like Al Horford's game, man. He, he's a hustler, man. I used to love, when I used to live in Atlanta, I used to love heckling Al Horford when the Knicks played the Hawks, man. He used to get pissed off. Because when the Knicks came to town in Atlanta, boy, that, that was like Madison Square Garden light. It, it was a home crowd. It was a home game for the Knicks, man. So when Al Horford used to be on the line and get booed by the fans, he used to get tight. He used to get tight, man. Dr. Carby says Al wants to win. CP, what you think about Stevens in Boston? He's on the hot seat now. You know, it's interesting, man. Brad Stevens, he was like the darling of the league for so long. You know, he, he was that that young mastermind uh, that people would, people would, you know, really crowned him early. And now with a bit of adversity, you know, they're, they're saying he could be on the hot seat. I still think he, he could be a good coach. I still think he is a good coach. Talent, it's still a talent league. You know, the coach can only get you but so far. It was, he, they're only two years removed from going to the Eastern Conference Finals without Kyrie. You know, with them upstarts and and uh, who's who's a short who's a short, stumpy, tough guy. Um, what's, what's what's the point guard name, man? He's a, he's a free agent as well. Made the all defensive team. Why is this, why is this guy's name slipping me, man? I I, f I forget his name. But the, you know they had that upstart. They had Rozier. They had Morris. They had Al Horford and them going in. They had Jalen Brown and Tatum. You know, he, Marcus Smart. Thank you, but thank you, Ari. Marcus Smart. They had Marcus Smart and those guys. And you know, they were two years removed from being in the Eastern Conference Finals, man. So you got to give guy. I give. Uh, I give Stevens some time, man. Justin Ariola said, "Be stupid to get rid of him." I agree. You got to give him time, man. It's a talent league. If they lose Kyrie, which it's sounding like they will. They lose Kyrie. You know, they got to get to the drawing board. They still got assets. They still got young talent. They got Tatum. They got Rozier. You see, they didn't want to put Tatum in the Anthony Davis deal. That's a, that was a good deal. That was a good move by uh, by um, Danny Ainge. You know, that, that was a good deal. Guillermo says, who we got mocked in the Knicks in the second round? Tune in tomorrow. That's a good segue. That's a good preview. Tomorrow night will be the draft pre-show. I got Schwinney from Posting and Toasting coming in. JL is coming in. We'll be taking your phone calls. We're going to go through a couple second round guys who we think um, will be there at 55. I mean, we're damn near picking at the bottom of the draft. Thank you, Phil Jackson. For those of you that don't know, we should have had the first pick in the second round. But way back when, we fell in love with a guy named Travis Ware. And because of that, we traded another Travis, Travis Outlaw, who was well-washed at the time. Traded Travis Outlaw and a future second-round pick, uh, I believe, to the Houston Rockets to make space for Travis Ware. And that future second-round pick turned into the 2019 second-round pick. And now that belongs to the bum-ass Nets. Go figure. So, good for them. Thank you, Phil. And so now, the worst team in the league is picking at the bottom of the second round. But, hey, you never know. Steals are always happening. We look, you see where we got Mitch. You see guys like Draymond Green. You see guys like Jokic. You see guys like Isozo just recently undrafted. If you do your homework, you should be able to get somebody that could potentially contribute to the team.
You know, you see, so you can get somebody that can potentially contribute to the team. So we'll see. We'll see. But uh, yeah, shout out to Travis Ware, who's no longer in, long, no longer in the league, and uh, cost us the number one pick in the second round. Uh, what else? Who else we got in there? Shout out to Marcus Loriano. He said, "Would you eat CP3 contract for picks and have some star power?" No, 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 no. CP3, and, and you know what's so crazy? I can't believe. That the rocket, the rockets are imploding at the worst time. This is the time they supposed to go take that championship. They got the opportunity to win it. They got the opportunity to win it. This is the time. Golden State is wounded. The dynasty is on pause for right now. See, I can't believe CP3 and James Harden are clashing. That's terrible, man. I wanted to see CP3 get a ring. I want to see Harden get a ring. I like those guys, man. I was a CP3 fan for some time. And I like James Harden. So I got to blame DeAntoni, man. Everywhere he goes, it's always drama. It's always chaos. You notice that? They want to blame Melo all the time. But think about it. Everywhere DeAntoni goes with that system, and it flops, it's always turmoil. It's always turmoil. But I'm telling you, man, who's going to take on that CP3 contract at $40 million a year for a 34-year-old player? That is crazy. That is crazy, man. Uh, I, I can't, I can't, uh, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody says, is that the end of the State Farm commercials? I think so. I think they're going to go back to Chris Paul and Cliff Paul and cut out James Harden. Because, yo, it's crazy, man. You just never know what's going on behind the scenes on the on the team. Kaiser Sose says CP3 will never win a ring. Seems unlikely now, man, because they choked two years in a row. And it's not to say they would have beaten the Raptors this year. I mean, they probably wouldn't have, the way the Raptors were clicking. But, um... You know, yeah, it doesn't look like CP3 is going to get it. He had a good chance with the Clippers one year. The year that they lost to San Antonio, where they got matched up with San Antonio in the first round on some unfortunate uh, matchups. And they had a very good team. They had a good team with the Hornets um, one year. But yeah, for some reason, it, it's just CP3 is not working. And, and like I said, the West is so wide open. You got to take advantage of that, man. You don't know what the Lakers are, are going to be stacked with yet. Houston is already a full team come, coming off of, uh, uh, you know, two solid seasons. You got Denver. Yeah, they're good. Can't You know, they're, they're not they're not odds on favorite. They're not unbeatable. You got Portland. I don't think the Thunder will make it. I don't trust Westbrook. I don't trust Brody and them. You know? All right, let, all right, let's get to some more questions. My fault, no phones tonight. I have my bootleg studio right here, but uh, I don't have the proper laptop to take the calls. So it is what it is. But I'm, I'll just answer some questions in the chat, and then we'll get out of here. 441 people, shout out to all 441 of you. Hit that thumbs up button for your boy. If you want to support the show, best way to do it, subscribe to the channel number one. Hit that like button. Every time you come in, just, just hit it. If, if we earned it, hit that thumbs up button if you're a fan of the show. Subscribe and share. The share goes a long way. I've now reached 11,000 subscribers in one year. One year. So all that is due to you guys. All that is due to you guys. You know what I mean? So if you guys continue to support that way, we're going to come back with the fresh content. That, that's just how it's going to work. We also have a dope, dope Discord group. Uh, we got group chats going on on Twitter. We got group chats going on on Discord. Uh, share this video on Twitter with hashtag PostGameNYK. And we'll put you in both the Twitter group chats and the Discord group chats. The Discord group chat is real dope. Shout out my guy TM who set all that up. Broke out all the servers and the channels. You know, he's on that millennial stuff, man. I, I I can't keep up with that stuff. 
I'm, I'm not that advanced with this coach. My guy TM came in, took the reins, and really broke this thing out real, real well, man. So I appreciate that. My guy Nick's Feed is in the building. I, I really like Nick's Feed. If you guys are on Instagram, check out Nick's Feed. Check out Nick's Fan TV too, but definitely check out Nick's Feed. He, he's definitely a real one on there and, and real fresh with the content, real, real quick with the content. My guy Shells is in the building. He said, I'm looking like Rap City in the basement tonight. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Now, I'm in the hotel, man. I'm in the hotel, but I'm back in the studio tomorrow. Make no mistake, back in the studio tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, man, that, that's just what it is. Okay, let me get to some quick, quick, uh, let me get to some quick uh, questions, and then I'm going to get up out of here. Let's see. Kaiser Sosa says, how do you feel about the third pick for Atlanta's 8, 10, and 17? I think I think in the NBA draft, when you're a team that's looking for e rookies that'll be impact players immediately, and the draft is a crapshoot. I'm not saying just because you pick at the top, it's always going to be the best, because obviously we know that's not always the case. And just to divert a little bit, if you guys seen those graphics on where the players were drafted between the Warriors and the Raptors. It was a huge, it was a, it was a wide span, you know, somewhere in the one to 10, somewhere in the bottom end of the lottery, somewhere in the bottom end of the first round. It, you know, you just never know. But my opinion is it's not like the NFL draft where you can get real solid value all the time. It all depends on the draft class. This may not be the one where you want to do that. You know, we've been hearing all the time from these prognosticators and experts that it's a very top-heavy draft class. So in that regard, I'm just going to stick with three. I'm going to go with RJ. If Ja slips, I'm going with Ja, and we'll take it from there. Down the road, if 8, 10, and 17 turn out to be, you know, Jordan, Magic, and Bird, then we could say, you know what, we messed up. But for now, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm going three. I'm going with the Maple Mamba if he's there. And, and let's see. You know, uh, let's see. What do you guys in the chat think about that? What do you guys in the chat think about that? Would you take that depth at 8, 10, and 17? Or would you just stick with three? I would just stick with three. You know, I would I would just stick, stick with three. Earl Garris is what I like about RJ. A couple things things he's a scorer yes his his jump shooting needs work i think that can be fixed he's a scorer i think he has a dog mentality he's left-handed he can be a playmaker he's a willing playmaker at at six foot six six seven so he gives you that flexibility he can run the break he can run the pick and roll for you you know what i mean he's very interchangeable he can play the two he can play the three Yes, his defense needs some work. I get it. Jump shooting needs some work. I feel like those two things he can improve on. Those two things he can improve on. He brings a work ethic. Played professionally at the Canadian level. Went to one of the best schools in the country, Duke. Yes, they don't produce the greatest pro prospects. But he, but it, 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 you have to take that into consideration. The program that he went to. And the fact that he was able to put up those stats in the ACC against top-level competition. So those are some of the things that I like about RJ. Jarrell Williamson sounds like I'm describing Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox's motor was always a question, and we've seen that this year. And I'm not giving up on Kevin Knox. I'm not giving up on Kevin Knox. All the rookies need work. DS Piz 35 says that, you know? All rookies need work, man. And, you know, I think in this, uh, I guess, social media instant gratification society that we're living in, I think, yes, we should critique. We always wanted to critique the draft picks, understand uh, their strengths and weaknesses are. But I don't necessarily want to look at this guy's weaknesses and say, Oh, he can't be a good pro. You know, he had a bad game against so-and-so this year in college. He, you know, I don't want him. 
I, that's that's too short sighted. You know, that's too short sighted. I think there has to be a middle ground. Yes, you want to look at strengths and weaknesses, but you also have to be confident. That's why we have coaches. You know, that's why we have a coaching staff. It's not just about playing. You know what I mean? It's about system. It's about philosophy. It's about the players that you put around them. There's a lot of things that go into a player's development. There's a lot of things that go into a player's development that'll determine how good of a prospect they'll be. You know what I mean? You agree or disagree? What do you What do you guys think? You know, I don't. You know, I'm no expert at this. I'm just giving you my opinion. Derek Will says RJ will be detrimental to Knox's progression. Why you say that? Why Why you say that? See, I, I think RJ and Knox can work very well. I think they can be complementary of each other. I think RJ's ability to be a playmaker can help set up Knox for good shots. You know. Louis Lux says Fizz, unfortunately, doesn't run a system. That I agree with. Guillermo also brought up that point. That needs to change next year. We need to see some semblance of a system. Going forward. Chris Dada says, very inefficient score. Agreed. Agreed. Totally agree. Totally agree. You know, the, no no players at is without his flaws. <laughs> totally agree. Uh, what else? Shout out my guy, Michael Parker, for the super chat. He says, uh, I think the Knicks are going to be buyers on the second round. Which teams are likely to sell their second round picks? CK2K is the homie. Yeah, CK is my guy. Um, you know, looking forward to linking up with him in Summer League, uh, seeing what we're going to do. Definitely stay tuned because it's going to be Summer League and it's going to be free agency. So it's going to be kind of crazy, man. But I'm going to have the traveling studio with me and uh, we'll be ready to go. Whatever happens, whatever transpires. The teams in the second round that are typically sellers are typically the cap strap teams. You know, typically the teams, um, the Golden States of the world, the Houstons of the world, maybe Portland. You have to look at the teams that are tight with cap space. Maybe Philly, you know, maybe Philly. I'm just trying to think of some other teams that, that may be tight up there with cap space. Those teams that are typically tight with cap space will most likely be willing to give you their second rounders. Um, for for some cash incentives. Now, the thing with the Knicks is the fact that we want to save all the cap space to try to get those two max guys. I don't know. I don't see them buying into the second round. I don't see it. I don't see it. Could be wrong, but I don't see it. I think they're going to try to keep every penny they can to put into free agency and, and to try to get KD and Kawhi, KD, Kyrie Irving. I think that's what uh, I think that's what they'll do. But like I said, tomorrow night draft episode. Hope to see you guys there. Four hundred fifty-five people in the chat. Salute to everybody once again. If you're new, leave a hashtag new in the chat right now. I'll shout you out. If you're watching afterwards, leave a comment on the video. Hashtag new. I'll shout you out a bit later on, man. See what else is going on. Shout out Chunk Norris. What's going on? Keith Sinclair is always in here. Shout out Keith. Ari, what's good, my dude? Ari, I know Ari's nervous, man. Ari, Ari's nervous about what's going to happen this week. Ari, stay positive. I don't know. I, I can't call it, man. You're hearing so much stuff on the free agency front. It's Kyrie to Brooklyn things. You know, I'm on. it has me unsettled. You know, what What about these nets that... that you know, makes him so eager to, to join, you know, I don't like that, and God forbid they get both of them, I don't, I don't even want to start that, but you, you know where I'm going, I expect a harsh video in that regard, if that's, if that's our fate for free agency, Alvaro Rivera, new from Colombia, that's what I like to see, man, the international people, that's beautiful, salute, salute to Alvaro, my primo, Quiet Money says, pesky ass nets. I'm telling you, man. They're so chirpy. They're so loud. <clears throat> Steve Stark, irritating. Perfect, perfect word. Between Dinwiddie and Dunley. And, and, and they, they got the perfect guys to just be annoying, you know? That's the nets for you, man. 
But yeah, that, that's the situation, fellas. So yeah, like I said, I just wanted to come on real quick. Fortunately, didn't have the phones for today, but we'll be back tomorrow with the phones. A lot going on this week. We got the pre-draft show, <clears throat> draft party, live stream from the draft. So definitely stick to the channel and stay tuned for all the updates. Um, instant updates for tonight. Garland workout is tomorrow. What does that mean? The prognosticators are saying they're serious interest there. To me, it's the Knicks doing their homework, being prepared for any scenarios. If RJ's going at, at three, you got to be prepared. They want to get one last look at Garland. Knicks turn down the Hawks offer for the eight and ten pick for number three. Clearly, they want Barrett. They don't want to trade down. Uh, Pelicans could be interested in that same package from the Hawks. Pelicans are also rumored to be interested in RJ at two. We'll see what happens. Do they package up Lonzo Ball and four for two? We know Memphis is looking to move Conley. We're hearing that the Celtics and the Jazz are right now the front runners for Conley. Conley on the Jazz would be kind of nice. That Conley, Conley and uh and, and Donovan Mitchell and the Spider, that would be kind of nice right there. That would be kind of nice. Nick's interest in Julius Randle. Leave a comment on that. What do you guys think about that? As a potential option. Al Horford. Probably going to be out of our price range. What do you guys think about that? Leave a comment on those. Like I said, this is the home of the diehard Knicks fan. This is the offseason central. Any updates, any news, I'm coming live no matter where I'm at. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll break it down and we'll recap and, and all of that, man. So once again, thanks again for everybody for joining. Make sure you guys um, check out some of the videos. Top right-hand side of your screen. Check out some of the videos uh, from the past week. If you missed it, leave a comment on those. Nuke City, hashtag new. Appreciate it, man. Welcome to the channel. Make sure you get involved. Ruel Wilson says he's watching from Japan. Salute to Ruel, man. We had Colombia. We had uh, Puerto Rico. We had Dominican Republic. And we got Japan. Come on, man. Don't let the, the, the haters fool you. Knicks fans are worldwide and supporting worldwide, man. That's why I don't listen to any of the doubters, man. The fan base is as strong as ever. The fan base is as strong as ever, man. Please believe it. Please believe it. Nuno Neves tuning in from Portugal. You see what I mean? Nuno Neves tuning in from Portugal. So, yeah, that, that's it, man. That's all I got for you guys tonight. Like I said... Back tomorrow night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Hit that thumbs up button for you, boys. Somebody said new from Taiwan. Anthony Lee, shout out. Uh, Ish H from Germany. Shout out to you guys, man. Once again, GH03, new from Corona, Queens. Um, appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Uh, it's just a lot of love, man. A lot of love coming into the channel. A lot of support. I definitely appreciate you guys supporting. Ash Hutchinson checking in from Australia. Oh, one more thing. On the Discord group, this is why I want you guys, especially the international, the global uh, subscribers, go into the Discord group because um, we're setting up phone calls for the international people to call in through Discord. I know I have a phone number up for the, for the U.S. subscribers, and obviously for the international subscribers, that's not a possibility. Go into the Discord group and, and subscribe to the Discord channel, the group chat. Eventually, we're going to have calls for the international guys to join in and call in. So there's going to be an opportunity for you guys to call in. So that's why you want to subscribe. Stay up on everything we're doing. Follow us on all our social channels because uh, we're, we're doing a lot of big things, man. We're doing a lot of big things, man. So, yeah, man. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Smash that thumbs up button on the way out. And uh, you guys have a great night. Thanks again, man. Peace.